What is up my good people? The name is Pixel Love and we are back again with another episode of Cuphead. I don't know how long I've been trying to do this introduction, but all I can just tell you is that I've been trying to do this for a really long while. And the problem with that is that I was actually doing a voiceover on Audacity. I wasn't on the actual game, so I don't know why, but words flow out of my mouth a lot more better when I'm just walking around playing the game, you know? Instead of just looking at a screen that just says, hey, you're recording. So anyways, in this episode, it is the expert run. And I'm pretty sure some of you guys are already waiting to see what I have in store for you guys. But there are a few things in the DLC that I missed that I just kind of wanted to go through just really briefly and really quickly. So in the last episode, I ended off saying that I wanted to check out this one little ladder that was just popping out of nowhere, but I never did because I said I wanted to stop recording, I wanted to edit the video, and I wanted to release it as soon as possible. So in this episode, we're actually going to be doing that. This is called The King's Leap. And spoiler alert for everyone watching right now, I've already done this. However, I will be providing voiceover, I will be providing commentary over what I've actually done. But basically, the king's gauntlet is basically you talk with this old guy, you talk with the king, and he gives you this arena-like challenges. There are five of them, and they're all based off of chess pieces. We have the knight, the bishop, the rook, the queen, and then we also have the pawns. I don't know why he's not giving me the pawns, but he just never does. Then we also have the gauntlet. The gauntlet is basically where you have to fight all five of them at once. Well, not at once. You have to fight all five of them continuously. So once you beat one, you go on to the other, yada, yada, yada. If you fail one, you die. Or you have to restart from the beginning. Which was pretty annoying, not gonna lie. Fortunately, this man... The, the, this man, he, he has a reason to be here, you know? One of the big reasons why you would want to try out the king's challenges and whatnot is because every time you beat it you get coins every time you beat one challenger you get two coins with the exception of the queen which was the last one and she gives you three coins but basically with the king and his challenges and whatnot i was able to purchase everything off of pork grind and I kind of needed that, to be honest, because I didn't know what would be the best shots for me to use or whatnot for the expert run. And so I just wanted to be as much, as prepared as I could possibly be. Anyways, I'm going to just show you the footage that I have for the gauntlet and whatnot. And of course, like I said before, I will be trying to provide commentary and just telling you guys what was my strategy, what did I do. And, well... I hope you guys enjoy. Take care. So the gauntlet is basically where you have to fight a bunch of champions and without your weapons and charms. Basically what you have to do is you have to attack them with parries. They're all chest based so as you can see here I'm trying to fight against the pawns and what you're supposed to do here is supposed to parry their little heads. This isn't too difficult however when they don't have their heads they go a lot more faster and typically the last few pawns like take forever just to like go down but with patience you will be able to do this flawlessly like you see right here the next part of the gauntlet we have the knight and the knight is all about mind games what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get up close and personal to him so he could do one of three attacks as you can see here, when he puts his arms down, he's going to do this uppercut attack. In that case, you do not want to go for a parry or else you'll probably get hit. I've never gone for a parry there unless I've never gotten hit. I want to play safe. This other attack where he basically puts his, um, his sword on the middle, he rushes in. And as me with Miss Chalice, you obviously want to double jump and like parry away. And when you see his eyes, he does like the sweeping uppercut not necessarily uppercut motion, but he does a sweeping upward motion, like that. And you would always want to parry on top. What I've noticed with the knight is that you always want to parry the top of the mo his little uh, mohawk, whatnot. Never go uh, for the middle or even the bottom, because you will typically get hit like I usually do. Again, just stay close with him. He's all about the mind games, all about messing with the AI. Don't be too much at a distance or else he'll just never attack you. 
he'll do that little hand motion right there. I think this is better with Miss Chalice. In fact, I think the whole gauntlet is just better with Miss Chalice than Cuphead because all of this is about speed and with Cuphead, it's more about precision. It's also a lot more easier with Miss Chalice because every time you get a parry, you reset your double jump. So let that be known. Again, just play it safe, you know, don't be greedy. You could, in theory, do three parries every time he tries to attack. However, I usually go for two because one is playing a little too safe and three is just being a little greedy. So, as you can see, you have a knockout. Again, it's a little bit more slower than the last one, but it's going to be worth it because you're not going to be getting rid of your health points at just stupid decisions. Now we have the bishop, and with the bishop, you're going to have to play, I wouldn't want to say safer, but you're definitely just going to have to be more aware of where he is, where his attacks are going. So what you want to start doing is you want to parry him as soon as you can, and he's going to light all these candles on fire. And after that, what you're trying, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put out these candles by walking forward into them. Now his attacks, the jingle bells, as I like to call them, they go where you are, not where you're going to. So just give it a little bit of time, and then they'll find where you, they'll find your position, and then they'll go straight at it, and then you'll be able to dodge straight through it. I think Miss Chalice is a lot more better here than Cuphead, mostly because this is about once again, this is about speed, not precision. But also because the double jump is actually really useful here. Um, you typically don't want to burn it right away, but you know, sometimes you can't. And then you also have the invincible roll, which helps a lot. And when you see all of the candles are lit up, that means it's had its final attack, and you'll be able to destroy him easily like that. In my opinion, I think the Rook is the hardest, mostly because you're just not really given a lot of space to work with here, honestly. What you're trying to do here is you're trying to parry these heads back towards the Rook, and this is all about patience. As you can see here, I wasn't patient, or to be fair, I didn't know if that head was going to even hit him. It looked like it was just going to hit his axe, so, you know, as much as I want to justify my mistake, I should have just left it as is but yeah as soon as you start getting more hits he's gonna start shooting these projectiles down at the bottom and you do not want to get tunnel vision by these heads you always want to keep these projectiles down below always on your mind where are they how fast are they going how many are they going and what position am I in again this is all about patience much like the knight it's okay if some of these heads are you know, they just disappear like that because what you don't want to end up doing is you don't want to end up pairing into one of them and then accidentally hitting a real skull or one of those projectiles down below. Another thing that you might not want to do is you might not want to parry down below on the ground. One, because the heads will typically just disintegrate before you even have a chance to parry. And two, because even if you do parries, either a projectile will be in your way or you just might end up not actually parrying and just getting hit by the head in general. Again, like I said before, you want to keep these projectiles down below here. At, you want to keep them in your mind at all time because in the last five seconds, they're just kept coming out, coming out, coming out. And so I died on that one quite a lot. So, you know, be careful on that one. The queen is surprisingly not difficult. You always want to keep the the uh, giant wall of parryable pieces in your mind but another thing that you have to keep in mind is where are these cannons be where are these cannons like where are their positions where are they gonna hit because if you're like me and just keep parrying them when they're not even pointing at her yeah you're not gonna really get any hits you're gonna have to be a little patient all this crap that she's shooting out of her royal eggs or whatnot, they're not too difficult to defeat or to evade. They remind me a lot of that little gumball machine from Baroness von Bonbon. And if you just keep that in mind, it will just be 
very easy to beat her. Honestly, I think the Rook outshined her. The Gauntlet looks scary, but if you remember the patterns and you know the basic fundamentals of how some of these characters work and whatnot, mostly from his chalice, then you'll have nothing to fear, honestly. So this is the first time I actually realized that there's a ghost puzzle here in Inkwell Isle 4. And this is connected with the broken relic that you get from Pork Ride. Basically what you want to try and find out doing is you want to find out what the combination of the ghost puzzle is. And in order to do that you need to find specific clues linked to the mountain guys that were up top near Glumstone the Giant. Okay, so I've been trying to figure out this graveyard puzzle for a little while and I was looking through some clues and some people were saying that I needed to look at what these um, mountain climbers were saying. First, second, and third. I'm the winner and all is right in the world. I got up right at the crack of dawn just to come in second. It's downright criminal. They let these other jokers compete. So, if I apply those, um, if I apply those things correctly, all is right in the world. I got up right at the dawn and came in second. It's down right criminal that they let these jokers compete. Sure. I'll take a little nap. What? A brawl is surely brewing. You're up. Oh, 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 Lord. Dog, what is going on? Oh, my God. Hmm. This is an issue. This is 100% an issue. Wait a minute, how, how am I at, how am I at one already? Wow, okay. I have no clue what is going on. Okay, this is gonna be a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. I don't know what to do. I genuinely don't know what to do. Here's a real high class Who am I supposed to be hitting? Am I even supposed to be hitting at all? This is such a weird pattern right now. This is such a weird pattern right now. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. I'm trying everything here in the book. Wait a minute. Oh, I get it now! Whatever way I'm facing is where he is. Where the devil is. This looks like a devil and angel. Ow. Ow. Okay, maybe it's not such a good idea for me to, you know, just stand there. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, this makes so much more sense now, sort of. Oh, but this is still difficult. Oh my God. All right, you know what? I'm staying on the cloud. This has been working for me so far. Just stay on the cloud. Stay on the cloud. Hey dog, can you like, you know, maybe not shoot at me? Oh my god, I was doing really good. My cloud strat worked. Just stay on the cloud. It doesn't work for me. Oh, come on. Alright. That's my 
That's the only downside that I have to this cloud. That's the only downside that I have to this fucking cloud. Okay, so the strat isn't necessarily to stay on the cloud the entire time. However, you can use it to its advantage. Basically, what you want to try doing is you want to try at least staying around the center so you have a little bit more leeway to dodge some of these fireballs and necessarily that pillar. Because the last thing that you want to end up doing is you want to, you don't want to end up being in a corner like that in which you kind of need to turn around and then get fucked. <laughs> Honestly, you could go with any shot, any DLC shots. However, I necessarily stick to the chaser because it gives me more time to uh, look where I am, my positioning and whatnot, rather than where I'm aiming and whatnot. And the fireballs are sent out at a slow enough pace that you really only need to jump, not necessarily jump and like do a dash or whatnot. Just be patient and be wary of where you are and then you'll end up getting a knockout, like this. Oh my god, what was that? Lord, what was that? I didn't even get to use my super. Could it be? The fabled cursed relic, long thought lost to time, awoken at last? I've seen writings that say it despises bravery. But the greater foe, more evil shall go. What could it mean? Yeah, what could it mean? Whoa. Cursed relic, it burdens host. Jinx curio that inflicts various ailments. Okay, the music already changed. Not so fast, little cup. Only Miss Cha- oh fuck. Yeah, only Miss Chas can see that. Alright, fine, fine. We'll, have to just, we'll just have to go to aisle one and see what's going on here. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about the Cursed Relic. I don't know how long it's taking me just to try and explain what this cursed relic does but i've been trying for so goddamn long on trying to do like voiceovers through audacity and whatnot and i was like oh, you know what i i, I can't i j i genuinely can't fucking do it so i had to make another save file or at least use the one of my pre-existing save files and get the cursed relic so that i'll be able to show you guys what it does all right so this is what the cursed relic does as you can see here down below yes here top bottom left bottom left yeah I am always going to be at 1 HP. Doesn't matter what boss you start off with, you're always going to be at 1 HP. That's one of the things unfortunate about the about the Cursed Relic. However, on the bright side, you now have access to the entire weapon arsery from the entire game. And if you think that I'm joking, I'm not. Because on this file, specifically, I don't have Converge, I don't have the, I don't know, I don't remember what was the name of the, of the other DLC shot. It's, it's the one that goes, it's the one that goes upwards, and I also don't have the Lobber. And, if we just go back here, the tutorial, that's Chaser, Roundabout, there we go. This is the twirling one. Again, I don't remember the fucking name of it. I should really find out about it. There's Converge. We have Converge. And we have Lobber. So, you now have access to the entirety of the weapon arsenal and Cuphead with the Cursed Relic. The only downside, of course, is that, well, you don't have control to change it. I am mashing my right bound button furiously right now and that the right bound button is what I use to switch my weapons as you could see right here if I can edit it in so while you do technically have control over what shot you don't want to use you're just like oh you know what i really don't like converge i think converge is a dog shit shot you could just stop shooting and then switch again and you get something like crack shot the only problem however is that you don't have like i said before you don't have the control to change what shot you want to into 
So if let's say I want roundabout, I just can't switch to roundabout. Oh well, I, <laughs> that's luck there. But let's say I want lobber. Nope, that's charge. Nope, that's pea shooter. Nope, that's the upwards one. Nope, that's chaser. There's nothing you can really do about that. There's, there's generally nothing you can do about that. So, another thing about the Cursed Relic is that you technically now have access to circle through four different four different charms. And those charms are the Whetstone, the Heart Rank, the Coffee, and Smoke Bomb. There you go, that's the one, that's the one. The problem is how inconsistent it is. So, let me tell you this. The Heart Rank it basically gives you a heart for every first, third, and sixth pair you get. However, with how inconsistent this thing is... That's my first parry, however, I still haven't gotten my heart. That's my second parry, where's my heart? Now I got my heart. Now, let's try to do this two more times to get my third parry, third heart. Okay, I still haven't, th that's, that's five parries right now, and I still haven't got my second heart. Now, there we go, there we go, now we have our heart. All right, now I have to do it three more times just to get my third heart, right, for the sixth parry. Even though I've already technically done six parries. One, two, three. I still haven't gotten my parry. I mean, my heart. Where it is it? There it is. It just goes to show how inconsistent this Cursed Relic is. And another, and like I said before, one thing that you actually can do is you can get the Whetstone. As you can saw there, you saw my little axe head. That's the Whetstone. However, as I mentioned before, it's inconsistent. So even though it looks like I'm having parry, even though it looks like, there we go, that's the whetstone. Even though it looks like it's just regular old parries, there's going to be a whetstone there once in a while. Like that. And as you see there, if I dash just enough times, maybe, just maybe, am I going to be able to get a smoke dash. Unfortunately, this isn't a relic you want to really rely on. This isn't a relic you want to bank on. If you're going up against like a hard boss and for some god knows reasons you really need all these weapons. You can't bank on always having your smoke dash because look at how many dashes I'm doing. And I just get one smoke dash. Look how many times I'm trying to parry. And one whetstone. And I've already shown you about how inconsistent this can be with also the heart ring. Which... Honestly, I think the heart ring is probably the one you you're gonna be relying on the most because Who wouldn't want more HP? You're already at one HP down the more the more the merrier the more hit points you get the more better for you And remember how I said that if you stop shooting and then shoot again you change your shot Let, Let's take this into account for a minute. All right, let's say that I really like the converge and I'm shooting over here But I need a dash Oh, now I accidentally switch to something that isn't Converge. You're like, God damn it, fuck. Oh, I dashed again. There goes there, there goes my other one. And now I'm using Pea Shooter. And now I'm using Crack Shot. Even though I don't understand why you'd probably be like, oh, Crack Shot. There's somebody out there who maybe is like, you know what? I don't like Crack Shot. And he's like, fuck, why did I switch to this? So just simple things like dashing stops you from shooting and then it changes your weapons okay but how about if i'm using my super you see let, let, let's say that i'm using the chaser here you know it's a great weapon i don't care how much people give chaser a shit for it's a great weapon let's say that i wanted to use my super i wanted to get a few more seconds of invincibility oh shit now all of a sudden i'm using the lobber this isn't what i needed to use for why the hell would i want to use a lobber against somebody like sally stage play when i could use chaser all right, but how about this? As you can see here, you could still technically parry and shoot, so that's one good thing. But let's say I want to up my DPS and I wanted to use my EX. Boom! Oh shit! Now all of a sudden I'm using the pea shooter. I wanted the lobber. Oh shit! Now I have the roundabout. Although this is just a way better pea shooter. If you really wanted the pea shooter, you'd be like, oh shit. Oh god, now I'm back in the peace shooter. Definitely, if definitely that would piss me off if I go for roundabout to peace shooter. Be like, no, I want my roundabout back. This is another problem that comes with the cursed relic. 
is that your super meter is it, it built up really slowly like as you can see here i'm finding the root pack and how am i at one card already like i understand that i understand that with my parries they're contributing to the heart ring not to my super meter but still this is dreadful i'm already at three cards and i'm at the onion like why is this a thing The super, the super build, the super charge is incredibly slow. I already beat the onion, and I still have not gotten a full super yet. The same principle applies with plane levels. As you can see here, I'm switching weapons. However, I do think I do think weapon switching in plane levels are more consistent. Mostly because you really only have two to go through. So, all in all, I guess the curse charm isn't so bad in playing levels. Because you only really have two weapons to go through. It isn't all doom and gloom, however, with the cursed relic. If you beat seven bosses, it could be either from the DLC or it could be from the base game. If you at least beat seven bosses, you'll be able to upgrade this relic into something beyond your imaginations. Now, for me personally, I did all five bosses from Inkwell Isle 1, and I did Captain Brinybeard and Werner Vermin, as you're seeing right now. Mostly because I thought those guys were the easiest for me to beat. And... As you can see here, it's like there's nothing really interesting going on with the Cursed Relic. It's just your regular fight. Mind you, this is on regular, not on expert or simple. I would have done it on simple, but I just don't want to do seven bosses and then realize, oh fuck, I, uh, it didn't count. Which would have been really upsetting to me. But like I said before, it's just regular bosses. And fun fact, my game actually crashed here. <laughs> I think my game crashed. Uh... Yeah, the game, I think the game crashed. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh man, I was so close. I don't care what happened. <laughs> it just stopped working on me. Oh, I guess I'll have to try again. So once I beat Werner Vermin and you beat, or at least for you guys, once you beat at least seven bosses, you will now have access to the Divine Relic. Now what does the Divine Relic do? I'm here to tell you. Here's what the Divine Relic does. Aside from changing the background music to something a little bit more heavenly and dare I say more kingly, dare I say more kingly, this is what the Divine Relic does. As you can see here, I'm not even in the tutorial and I already have this blue-like transcendent shadow across me, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Also, this could just be me, but I feel like, I may not show it right now, but I feel like my tea bag definitely got like a lot more better. Could just be me, or it could just be because I'm getting better at tea bagging, but that's, that's just my opinion. As you can see, right down there, hold on, right down there on my top left, not top left, god damn it, bottom left, I am consistently getting super, which means that I have the coffee. But I also, but other than the coffee, I also have my smoke dash. But that's not all, people. Let me tell you, I have the whetstone. And once again, I have access to the entire... Arsery. Arsenal. I don't know why it keeps saying Arsery, for God's sakes. The entire arsenal of all the Cuphead weapons. And better yet, I now have a much more consistent heart ring. One, three, six. I now have six HP out of the three HP that I started. To, to put it to put it plainly to put it plainly what the cursed relic is or I mean the divine relic the divine relic is just a way more consistent cursed relic the cursed relic is cool and it is pretty powerful more powerful than most charms in my opinion the divine relic 
brings it up to another league. Having access to the entire arsenal of Cuphead's weapons alongside four simultaneous charms that are consistent is pretty broken. Honestly, it's incredibly broken. Unfortunately, one of the things that makes this charm not the best is the fact that like the cursed relic you're still you still have this weapon randomization you can't choose what weapon you go to honestly in my opinion i wouldn't mind losing one of these charms i wouldn't mind having to do 10 or even 15 bosses instead of seven i wouldn't mind doing those if it means that i could have the choice of switching between what kind of weapon I want to. I would low-key lose the heart ring in order for me to have the ability to switch weapons. Because that's one of the really bad things about both the Divine and Cursed Relic in my opinion. Is that you do not have control over what kind of... Or what, what your next weapon is. And if I was able to do that, oh boy, this Divine Relic would absolutely shred through the entire game. I'm also going to leave this quick tangent over here, but as soon as I got the Divine Relic, and as soon as I was able to figure out that I could get six hearts all from parrying, I decided to go to King Dice because I know there was one achievement in which you needed to get nine hearts all at one time, and it wasn't the greatest, I'll be the first to admit. As you can see here, I'm just waiting for my super to come up over here because I'm trying to be an invincible for when I actually fight King Dice. But yeah, like th this was just one of the few things, few, few good reasons on also getting the Divine Relic. If you're an achievement hunter like I am, then you could get your nine hearts or I guess six for whatever God knows reasons that just put me at six. But the rest is history. Also, I'm going to put this right here just because I don't know where else to put it. But if you go through this little segment, you can get this coin. So, aside from the King's Gauntlet and this little secret coin, you are now able to get everything from Pork Ride. Anyways, on to the expert run. Alright, so I'm going to be starting off with Esther Winchester first. Mostly because I think she's the easiest boss in the DLC, at least for me personally. Aside from like Dr. Cow's robot, I feel like I've been pretty good with plane levels in general. And for this one, and for any plane levels, as you know, all you really need to know is what kind of charm you're using. And so for this charm, I'm going to be using the Divine Relic. Mostly because with the Divine Relic, I have four different charms equipped at once. I guess what really matters the most is the Heart Ring and the Coffee. Those are the two that I almost exclusively use. Or at least, for the coffee at least. The heart ring I've actually never used up until now. Up until the Divine Relic, of course. But I, I think this would benefit me more than just the Astro Cookie. Because all the Astro Cookie really does for me in, in the plane level is just change out the weapons. And I, Cuphead's weapons are already fine as is on the plane level. So I don't need to make things any more harder for me or whatnot. Anyways, let's, let's get right to it. Fun fact, there is an achievement that you can get by fighting with Winchester. You see that little flying critter over there? As long as you don't kill him and you beat Winchester's fight, then you'll be able to get an achievement in which you beat a DLC boss without killing any of its minions. Anyways, the biggest problem that I had with Phase 1 was just trying to figure out where the snake goes worse. But there's this sweet spot in between both of these snakes that... In which, like, you don't get hit by either the top or the bottom. I always try to go for that. Mostly because, like, if I try to go for, like, the top, then I'll probably get hit by that bird with the dynamite. If I go to the bottom, there's probably that little critter over there who's just sh shooting out shit. Or a dynamite, or even worse, a cactus. And for this phase in particular, it's not too hard. Like, all you do, all you really need to do is, like, shrink down in case, like any of this baggage, any of this loot gets really close to you. That's really it, like, I don't get why a lot of people say, like, this is a hard phase. This is pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory for me. 
In my opinion, I actually think phase three is the hardest, mostly because of this T-bone steak that just loops around. Like, the, the, the loop is really hard to get a feel for. Also, how did I not get that parry? What the fuck? But yeah, the loop for the T-bone steak is just really hard to get a feel for. And not only that, but I, sometimes I just feel like I'm not hitting Winchester because of how many dogs I have to be... I have to be, um, what should we call it? Evading. And I'll, again, how the fuck did I not get that prey before I got hit? Anyways, th this one, it gets my blood boiling a bit. Not necessarily because it's hard, but because, like, I'm so close. I, I can't fuck up. And then usually I just fuck up. But just be careful with where you're going. I personally like to stay around the top because, like, I'm always looking around the top. I don't know why, but just being around the bottom just really gives me bad anxiety. But yeah, like phase, like phase two, like if you really need to get out of a pickle, just uh, be able to like shrink down. And also, I'm really upset that I didn't get my super in time to get that. Anyways, as I mentioned before, I think Winchester was the easiest for me. She was also the first one that I got an S on. And like I said before, there's the fun fact of which you could get that little achievement. So good luck on your fight with Esther Winchester. Trust me, she's easy. Just don't give in to pressure. Don't give it to anxiety. You'll do great. Okay, so for the Howling Aces, I'm going to be using the good old Chaser as my primary. Honestly, I think the Chaser is kind of slept on just, just a little bit. I think... Especially in the last phase, the chaser is what really helped me out. And for the my secondary shot, I'm going to be using the Converge. Mostly because, again, the Converge helped me out on my first run, on my regular run. And, like, I have been getting more better at narrowing the spread. So, hopefully that can come in handy. But even if I can't narrow the spread, it's still a pretty, like, big spread. So, I'll be able to hit something. And for the super, I'm going to be using the second super art. Which, from his chalice, is actually a little shield pal. I think I mentioned this in Saltbaker's regular, in regular fight when I was fighting him last episode. But apparently, you end up just getting one free hit. And I think, in the long run, one free hit is better than just a few frames of invincibility. Not gonna lie. And, of course, in order for me to have that one free hit, I'm going to have to be using the Astro Cookie with Miss Chalice. Again, I think it's better for me to go as Miss Chalice for, like, most of these bosses because, like, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the em enemies and entities that are just flying all over the place, I feel like it, it works better for Miss Chalice. Most because it's a lot about, like, speed and shit. <laughs> and, not gonna lie, I have been playing a lot of Miss Chalice over Cuphead, so... I feel like my Miss Chalice gameplay would be more easier in this instance than if it would be with Cuphead. Especially, like, the first phase, uh, where I can get, like, invincible rolls and, like, dash parries. Whereas with Cuphead, especially, especially with, like, parries, I think that'd be more detrimental to me. So, I think that's just a long bullshit excuse for me to say, I think Chalice is just better. So, let's get right into it. I'm a little upset that A, I left my mic on here so you're actually able to hear me and my controller. But also B, that there's fucking thunder outside while I'm doing this voiceover and editing. So, if you hear thunder, I'm sorry. Anyways, my strategy here is that I'm trying to go more or less alternating left left to right, sort of like this big dog is doing. Mostly because, like, there's just shit flying everywhere and, like, I don't want to be cornered. I want to have a place for me to do my invincible roll and I just don't want to be just caught off guard from something off screen that accidentally hits me. Honestly, looking back at this, I could have probably used a crack shot instead of the chaser, but this was around the time where I still had no clue how good the crack shot is, so uh, just don't mind me. When I was doing the expert run, I was mostly doing it based on can I do it rather than how good my grade is. 
Also, as soon as you get a super here with your super 2, there is literally no reason why not to pop it right away. As soon as you pop it right away, you'll still be able to build up another super, so just do that. Also, if you get hit on this phase, the easiest phase in the entire DLC, just go retry GG next. Like, there's no reason why you shouldn't get hit here, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get some of these free parries on these Bow Wows over here. This next phase, however, phase 3, is a completely different story. This is one of the more difficult phases in my opinion. I don't know why, but the lasers are hard for me to figure out. These bowls, they, they can be a little bit of a pain, but if you got the jukes like me, then you'll be able to <laughs> juke them out. You can actually be able to hit the boss on this, on the lasers. As you can see, like some of my shots were actually uh, highlighting uh, the enemy lasers. As you can see here, there's just a lot of bowls, a lot of the yellow bowls go on the top, so I don't necessarily want to jump, I more or less want to roll. But there are some times in which just like some things just get, catch me off guard. And honestly, like this entire sequence, like I really wish I could like use a charge or something because like the chaser here is just dreadful with how low of a power it goes. Also, the amount of times that my shield pal over here has actually saved me it just goes to show like how broken this super is if put to good use anyways i get a knockout here howling aces it could be a little bit of a mixed bag but i think it leans more or less towards the easier side of things just try to go for weapons that do give you like more damage i wouldn't recommend chaser i would probably recommend using crack shot on this one mostly because you're not moving around a lot well, the enemies are not moving around a lot, so Crack Shot will be able to hit you much more consistently. Alright, so for the Moonshine mob, I'm going to be using a Crack Shot. I don't know why I haven't been using the Crack Shot earlier, because this shot is incredibly broken. It honestly really is just a better chaser. But you'll see why I'll <laughs> I have chaser as my secondary. But yeah, for the most part, Crack Shot is just a, a much better chaser. It does much more damage, and yeah, that, that's really it. The reason why I have Chaser over here is because, unlike the Crack Shot, the Chaser is a lot more better in Phase 3, mostly to get rid of, like, that little mosh pit, do I want to call it? No. It's just, like, a ball. I, I really don't know how what to call it. It's really just a ball. And the thing is, is also the chaser is able to like hit the, I believe it's an aardvark. Yeah, it's, a, it's able to hit his snout a lot more consistently than with the crack shot. And the thing about the last phase is that I'm really terrible at aiming, let alone timing things. So I think both the crack shot and the chaser would help me out. Crack shot mostly for phases one and two, but the chaser much more for phase three. Super R2, once again, I have a little shield pal buddy from the astral plane that I could just take one free hit. I feel like people are maybe sleeping on this super R because it is absolutely broken in my opinion. And of course, we're going to go for the astral cookie. Again, I think Miss Chalice is just better and, mo and almost all of these DLC bosses. So, you know, why wouldn't I choose her? Anyways... Let's get right into it. I don't know what's about the Moonshine mob, but for some reason I've had more difficulties with this than I'd like to admit. I don't know why, but this little caterpillar over here, I've always had problems trying to dodge it. I've always had problems trying to parry this goddamn exterminator little puff cloud. Almost every time I try to parry it, I just get fucking hit. And like... These web, these web bombs over here, like, I do try to, like, invincible roll here and there's, but, like, sometimes when I just want to do, like, a regular dash, like, I still just get hit and shit, and I'm just like, dog, like, how? The spider himself isn't necessarily difficult, it's just the shit around him that's difficult. Also, I try to, like, use charge shot over here because of how stationary this ladybug, or 
what kind of bug she is. I, I have no fucking clue what she is. But it is just not it. Like, crack shot all the way over here. Anyways, my strategy for this one is that I try to wait for the first yellow line. And then as soon as the second one comes, I just run like hell to the opposite side so that I don't get hit. And as soon as you defeat her, whatever you do, do not stay on that middle path. Because she's still an active hitbox. And I've gotten hit by her more times than I like to admit. And also, phase 3 on this one. This one is just... If, if Howling Aces was difficult for me, this one is like... Ugh, it's, it's beyond worse. And it's not necessarily because of the ball over here. It's just because like I'm I feel like I'm not getting I feel like I'm not hitting him at all. And like I really don't want to risk going for like parries over here to like up my super because like again, I'm trying to complete this. I'm not trying to get a good grade on it here. I I just feel useless here, which is why I'm switching back and forth between Crackshot and Chaser because I'm just like, "Dog, what the fuck do I do here? Am I hitting him?" Again, like I tried using uh, charge on this one and I just felt useless it just could be it just could be me and I could just need a better weapon but I don't know phase 3 is something else anyways this guy it shouldn't be too difficult I'm surprised of how many shots it actually took him uh, to die but again I am using chaser you could use crack shot on that he's stationary crack shot is going to be able to aim straight at him but Moonshine Mob is still one of the only bosses that I still haven't gotten an A for. At least here in the Expert Run. And I'm definitely going to have to get an A for it on my own time. But for the time being, it's just a more faster version of the reg of the regular Moonshine Mob. So don't worry. You'll, you'll be fine. Alright, so for Glumstone the Giant, we're going to have a crack shot again. Once again, it's just a better chaser, does way more damage, and it also aims. Why wouldn't we want to use the crack shot here? And for my secondary, I'm actually going to be using the roundabout. I personally think that the roundabout is really good on both phase 1 and 2. The crack shot, mostly good for phase 1 and 3. But I think the roundabout just helps me a lot when, with covering like a lot of space. Especially when I'm on the left side of the wall in phase one and when I'm trying to move around on the on the ground for phase two. I think roundabout is kind of a must pick on this boss just because of how versatile versatile it is. I'm actually gonna be using Super R3 over here. Uh, if you don't know, Super R3 is this ghostly barrage. Basically a shit ton of ghosts come out and Honestly, it's like I don't know, I don't know if I want to say if it's a better version of Cuphead's first super, but it's like this horizontal just like beam of like fucking ghosts just hitting everything and everyone. It also gives you a free parry. Free parry if you do it correctly. So there's that and of course I'm going to be using the Astro Cookie as Miss Chalice. Don't think I need to say anything more. I think Miss Chalice is better for these DLC bosses. So without further ado, here we go. When I was doing the expert run, I've always had problems with Glumstone the Giant. And it's not because he was difficult. In fact, far from it. I think Glumstone the Giant was my biggest improvement of boss of bosses in the entire DLC run. He became stone cold easy for me during this expert run. But my problem with him is that because of how much crap there is on screen, OBS just could not keep up like my GPU was constantly like at a hundred percent as soon as I was running Cuphead and Glumps Thunder Giant like It took me a day just to figure out what was going on. What are these frame issues? But I'm glad that you guys are at least able to see Glumstone in 30 FPS Anyways, I think roundabout here is the best weapon. I know some people say charge would be better but I think Roundabout is just better, slightly better, mostly because like because you can throw it at, at any angle that you can, you'll almost always be hitting something. Whether it be the Puppet King Dice, the Puppet Devil, or any of these little goddamn gnomes that are coming out of the ground. One of the big problems that I have with Miss Chalice's uh, Super 3 is 
kind of it's kind of one of the things that I hated about Gl- or recording Glumstone. It's just that there's so much shit on screen. I almost I almost just have no clue what's going on. But anyways, this phase by far I think is the easiest phase. All you just really need to do is just keep an eye track of how many platforms you have and where the hell Glumstone is shooting his thing. Is shooting his bones, shooting his food. There are less platforms here available to jump on than on regular mode, but because Miss Chalice has her double chump, like, it, it, you really don't need to worry about anything at all. Like I said, Glumstone the Giant was a massive improvement for me from regular to expert. So much so that I wanted to show you guys what an S run would look like. And as you can see, mamma mia golly, we got a perfect score over here. Crack shot, crack shot, crack shot. It destroys the gnomes, it destroys glum shot. That Glumstone, that's all you need to know. Mortimer Freeze is an interesting person. The reason I say that is because, with the exception of Chef Saltbaker, I think Mortimer Freeze is the second hardest boss in this entire DLC. For my primary shot, I'm going to be using Converge. So you might be asking, why are you using this? It's a dog shit um, weapon. It's, the reason why I use this is because, like, I think I used Converge, like, a lot during my first run through with Mortimer Freeze and like I've kind of gotten used to it It might be weird for me to say but I really would rather prefer like using converge during phases one and two Than something like crack shot for example speaking about crack shot here it is I think crack shot is much more suited for phase three uh, This could just be me bullshitting because I Mortimer Freeze is just fucking on his league of his own in terms of difficulty or at least to me he is and obviously I haven't had a lot of time using a lot of the new weapons I guess with the exception of Converge but that's just my simple opinion uh, for my super, I'm going to be using Super R3. Once again, Ghostly Barrage. I think it's a slightly better version than Cuphead's first super. And I don't think I need to mention this, but once again, we're going to be using the Astro Cookie. This child is just better against most DLC bosses, so I don't think I need to explain any more. So let's get on with fighting more and more freeze. I honestly wish I could say the same thing about Glumstone that I could with Mortimer Freeze, but unfortunately Mortimer Freeze was just absolutely fucking hell on me. Anyways, the reason why I use Converge over here is because aside from getting very used to it, he helped a lot with getting rid of some of these, I don't know what the fuck you'd want to call them, but it's just his minions. Uh, because, like I said before, because of its piercing ability, it's able to hit all of them simultaneously, so with just a few shots, they'll be dead. But with Converge, what you always want to try doing, unfortunately, is you always want to try to narrow the spread because you always want to get more bullets in. And due to how quick it is, you always want to always up your DPS. Honestly, as much as Super 3 does with DPS on this on this fight, it, there's, just, there's just enough crap on screen as is. So it could be either a detriment or it could be very useful. Depends on you, but I think Super 3 was fine enough for for me on this fight. One of the big things that I always try to do when fighting his second phase is I want to try staying on the wall, mostly because I'm able to invincible roll, be able to escape those ice cubes, be able to escape his little um, knives that come out of the ground. And for phase three here, I think crack shot, crack shot, crack shot, crack shot is better. Uh, you could probably, Honestly, just looking at how uh, Mortimer is like, you could probably opt in for a lobber, but why opt in for something that needs aim and you can go for something broken that, again, has aim? Again, my problem comes with how much shit comes from Super 3. I also still have not gotten accustomed to how often his little eyeball keeps getting hit, or at least hits. So that was one of my biggest issues with phase 3, but other than that, like, Mortimer, 
I, I, I don't know what, what it's about him. He's just kind of like a Glumstone the Giant to me, but on opioids. Like, there's a lot more shit going on on the screen, yet I never get... Yet I never lose my frames when recording with him, with the exception of pausing a menu and whatnot, but... Yeah, Mortimer Freeze. He's hard as balls. Who would have known? Oh, God. Well... There's no being around the bush here. I have to go against Chef Salt Baker on the expert run. So for my first primary fire, I'm going to be using the crack shot. Like I said before, I think this is just a better chaser. And honestly, chaser's the primary fire that I've used for Chef Salt Baker in the regular run, on, or at least his first phase. And considering the crack shot not only does more damage than chaser, but it, it's also just better in general. I'm going to be using this one instead of Chaser. I'm going to be using Roundabout for Phase 2 and mostly for Phase 4 because if you didn't know, you can actually hit Chef Salt Baker as his heart with a few bullets in Phase 4. But this is mostly going to be for Phase 2 with all uh, the Salt Shakers and whatnot. I think Roundabout is better than Crackshot most because you can just fill the entire screen with Roundabouts. Super R2, it comes to no surprise, but I think the Shield Pal, the free hit, is going to be very useful in this situation. Most because there's a whole lot of shit going on on the screen. And I don't want Chef Salt Baker to, keep, to put me off guard. So, having just a free hit at the back of my pocket while, while charging up for another free hit. Like, come on. It, it's broken. Of course, I have to use the Astro Cookie for this. I don't know how in God's name I'd be able to do Chef Salt Baker as Cuphead, but I personally would rather have to do it with as Miss Chalice. Not only because I get the free hit from her super, but also just because she's better in these DLC bosses. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here is Chef Salt Baker. Salt Baker on Expert, much like Salt Baker on Regular, is no joke. One of the biggest things, biggest advantages that Salt Baker now has during the Expert run is that he now has two of those little fucking living fireballs for both Phase 1 and Phase 2. And if you've seen my last episode, you know how much of a detriment they are to me. Once again, with the sugars, you always want to get a parry on them. You always want to fill up your super as quickly as possible, especially with super 2, because as soon as you fill up your super, it's just a free hit. Why wouldn't you just want to get a free hit? It's, it's even better than a free heart, in my opinion. But anyways, Chef Saltbaker kind of works very similarly on Expert, like he did on Regular. Again, with the exception of two living fireballs and whatnot. But I think Crackshot here is probably the best weapon against Salt Baker, mostly because of how much he moves around. Like honestly, unless you actually play like Cuphead, you understand what I mean by he moves way too much for somebody in the background. Looking back and remembering this phase in particular, I am absolutely disgusted, fucking disgusted at how obscenely large these leaf hitboxes are. It is nauseating how easily you can get hit by some of these leaves. Even when they're on the fucking ground they can still hit you. So with Miss Chalice in particular you always want to try a jumping, just a little tap jump, maybe a double jump here and there and some invincible rolls but you obviously want to keep into account where, where all this shit is going. For this one, I actually had problems with back on the regular run, but with this one, it wasn't so bad. As soon as you see this thing falling down, you just want to roll, you just want to probably dash away. Well, actually, no, you definitely want to roll because it's invincible. Because you don't want to end up getting a bad spawn here. Anyways, I think roundabout here is better because you could just fill this entire screen with a bunch of roundabouts and whatnot. And here's where I fucked up. 
What you do not want to do is you do not want to stack these shield pals. If you have one, you cannot stack one with another. As you can see there, I had the little shield pal on there, but I didn't get the free hit. So I'm very upset. And in fact, I actually did this same issue earlier with phase two, but yeah, they don't stack. So as soon as you get hit, you want to wait for your invincible frames to stop. And then you want to pop your super again. That way you'll be able to get the free hit. But whatever you do, if you still have not gotten your free hit, like do not, do not stack. For the love of God, do not stack or else you're going to throw like I was. I was so get close to getting an S run. If I didn't stack those two supers, I would have been able to get an S here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you guys today. I will say that it was a little weird going back and trying to record some of these things because I've actually done... I basically did the entire expert run before I even gave my explanations as to what kind of cards I've been using. And not only that, but I've actually gone back to some of the other worlds and I've been doing an S run. As you can see here, I got an S on all of World 3. I'm fucking Dr. Cal's robot, let's go. And on World 1. I still have yet to do World 2. I'm still working on that. Again, I'm just doing this on my own free spare time, so I doubt I'll make a video on an S run. But I also kind of need to get an A on the Moonshine Mob and Mortimer Freeze. I don't know why, but those guys are giving me a really hard time, especially with the parries in those two. By far, I think those two have the hardest parries to to just get in terms of the grade levels. But other than that, like I have nothing else to show you guys. I, I did the expert run. I did the. Um, I showed you guys how to get the divine relic and whatnot. I did the king's gauntlet. I really did as much as I could here and of course like I said before I need to do the achieve get some of these achievements on my own but I have nothing else to show you guys so before we end it off I feel like I'm obligated to do one more thing which I'm actually kind of upset that I didn't find out about this until I was editing the first episode of DLC I think we should end it off with the man the myth the legend, the man with the rhymes. Through all your battles and all my rhymes, you have failed and perished 367 times. Now, I don't know how much I've died since episode 14, A Grim Feeling. I don't know how long I've died since then. Actually, no, because I technically recorded episode 13 after episode 14. Fun fact. I think I've explained about this before, but... Yeah... It was just hell, <laughs> really. But that's Cuphead for you guys. I, I can't believe it, it's over. And what better way for it to be over than to hear the divine organ music that is the divine relic. Anyways, if you liked the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Memento Mori and whatnot, and I will see you guys in next episode. Take care, everybody.